Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there, hunters. Welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Except you're probably not hunters. You're probably some random dude with a pistol and PJs on. Anywho, today we're going to cover starting up in Remnant, which I know is going to be a little bit different than usual. Remnant isn't a new game anyways, it came out last year and I absolutely loved it, but now there's DLC that came out and I've just fallen back into this game, and the DLC should be available on consoles next week, so I'm kind of doing this now. I'd recommend picking it back up again for sure, because there's even more planned for the summer. Back on topic though, getting started in Remnant. If you're unfamiliar with the game, it's basically a Souls-like game with guns. It's up to three players co-op, kind of a drop-in, drop-out thing, people would just come and go if you have a public game or you just play with your friends. Now what makes this game stand apart is that the world is randomly generated, to a degree. Think of it like a board with puzzle pieces, and the pieces each have a side area or a dungeon and a boss or event with them. Every time you generate a world, it fills in each space, so you do need to play through the game multiple times to get experience at all the bosses and get all the gear. Now speaking of the gear, there is a good chunk of it. It can be mostly found in the world either on the floor or doing some puzzles and stuff. Enemies don't really drop anything. Bosses tend to drop a weapon or a weapon mod. Think of weapon mods like spells, you generate mod power by shooting or using melee, and you can freely move around your weapon mods between weapons, except boss weapons are kind of locked in unfortunately. It's pretty straightforward. You dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge away through the game. Just loot and shoot, man. So now let's talk about just some beginner info that you actually may need to help get you started. First off, don't worry too much about your starting class. Like Souls games, it only really influences your initial set of gear. The armor, weapons, and mods can all be purchased from the vendor in town right away if you'd like. The only thing that you can't get right away is the trait assigned with each class. Those have to be unlocked through other various means. It's up to you on what you want, but I would advise against the melee character. The set and trait it starts with is pretty solid, but melee just isn't really fleshed out in this game, and there are some bosses you straight up cannot reach with melee, so you're gonna want to be ranged. Cultist is for mod generation setups, and the marksman is for ranged weak spot exploitation. Just pick one of those. The game's gearing is very much like Souls games rather than other RPG focused games like Neo. There is a very set amount of gear with very specific stats, and you can upgrade them, but that's about it. There's no RNG loot or random properties or anything like that. It's pretty simple. Now speaking of gearing, so the advanced stats page will show you in the bottom left hand corner what your gear looks like compared to the monsters in your game. Now up arrows mean you have higher attack or defense compared to the level of the monsters, and down arrows mean you're kind of falling behind. The game scales in kind of a weird way. Every time you create a campaign, because you can reroll it whenever you want, or you make a new adventure map, it rolls enemies to match your current gear score. Now if you're thinking, well, why would I ever bother upgrading my gear? Well, it's because each area has a minimum level that the monsters will always roll. So the end of the first act is like, let's say it's level 5. Then you roll through a fresh game and you run to the end and you don't upgrade anything, you're going to be below the level of the monsters, so they're going to start feeling tankier and hit you a lot harder. Then as you upgrade your gear, you will outlevel them because the enemy levels are locked in for the entire campaign. So you can't outlevel stuff if you keep up with all your upgrades. But you also don't need to go crazy on upgrades. It's not like you can't kill an enemy five levels higher than you. It's just going to feel tankier. Now speaking of difficulty, there are four of them in the game. Normal, Hard, Nightmare, and the newly added Apocalypse. There's also Hardcore to go with all of those. And I'll be frank, Normal is just way too easy. It's not really a challenge at all. If you want a good experience, I would recommend starting on hard. If you find it's too much, you can always just reroll the campaign and choose normal. You don't have to start over a new character or anything like that. Now once you finish the game once, there's literally zero chance that you've done everything or gotten all the loot, so I would recommend playing it once more on a higher difficulty, so if you started on hard, then playing on Nightmare next would be pretty fun. As the difficulties go up, you can imagine what the scaling is like. Bosses don't really change, and there aren't really any more enemies as far as I can see, but it just scales their damage and HP. Health isn't too crazy, I mean you can still one-tap normal enemies with headshots with most weapons if they're upgraded, but on Apocalypse, enemies are just going to start constantly one-shotting you. So yeah, it's not so much about damage, it's just not getting hit. Now once you've done the story once or twice, you have some other game mode options you can do. And while you weren't locked out of adventure or survival in the first place, I recommend doing the campaign first. 
Adventure mode just makes small instances of whatever act you pick with two bosses in it, so you can go and collect gear you may have missed in each act without having to reset your entire story mode campaign if you don't want to do that. There is also a handy community tool I would recommend you pick up if you're starting to hunt down all your gear. It's the Revenant Save Manager. You can make save backups, which I also highly recommend you do, because save corruptions are not unheard of and I've lost one of my characters due to it before. It will auto back up your character every 10 minutes or so and it stores like 100 saves. So you can also use it to check out the world layout and see what items drop in the areas you have and what you're missing. It's very handy. The other thing you can do is survival mode, which is newly added with the DLC and the reason why I've been dumping so many hours into it. It's basically a roguelike mode. You start with nothing and you can buy some starting gear and then you get sent off to a random area with a random boss. Pick up gear and traits and stuff along the way and just keep going until you die. There's a timer that ticks down depending on your difficulty and will level up enemies every so often. So eventually enemies are just going to start to crush you. Now while you do survival mode, you do get special account bound gear for all your characters and any new characters you make as well. So you need to get like a 10 boss kill streak and 100 total boss kills to get everything in survival for all your characters. There's also special currency items you can pick up to buy armor skins for all your characters which is pretty cool. So it's a nice thing you can do to get more gear for your characters without just rerunning the campaign constantly. Now you can also do hardcore playthroughs once you learn all the bosses. Killing act bosses in hardcore also provides you with extra accessories for all your characters and future characters you make, so I do highly recommend you give hardcore a go at some point. It's nice that there are incentives to playing all these different game modes and they're actually really fun. Now regarding traits and trait points, you unlock new traits by doing certain things or completing certain puzzles and bosses. Uh, I don't even have them all yet, fucking backstab for one. Anyway, they all max at 20, and feel free to dump all your points into whatever you want. You get a free respec token after you beat the game, and then afterwards you can just buy them from the vendor for scrap, so go crazy, it doesn't matter. Also, there is no cap on the amount of trait points you can get. I'm at like 600 right now on my character. They are the blue drops in maps, they're like little tomes, automatic skill point, and you also get them from leveling up by killing enemies. Now, traits and trait level have no effect on enemy level. That's all based on your gear score. So like I said, just fucking go crazy. And lastly, weapons and balance. The devs have done a great job balancing this game between all the weapons. No one weapon is far superior except the Devastator or inferior to anything else. Everything works, so when you're choosing your weapon, just use whatever you like unless you're trying to make specific builds. And you can't even make hyper-focus builds until you start unlocking all the weapons and armors and traits and accessories. So I wouldn't even worry too much about that if you're just going through your first or second playthrough. Just kind of build as you go and play with whatever you like. Trust me, you'll be fine. So that's about it for the basics of Remnant and starting out in the game. As I mentioned before, I absolutely love this game and I'm super hyped for the summer DLC that's planned because Swamps of Courses was great. Adds tons of new stuff. Also, the devs are really good at keeping regular patches up with this game, and it's gotten a lot better in the past year if you just kind of played it at launch and stopped like I had. Highly recommend picking it back up for a bit. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and good luck out there, hunters, and whatever you may be hunting.